This podcast is intended for adults 18 years and older. It contains explicit language and sexual situations. All thoughts and opinions expressed are of our own and not of those of any specific group, employer, or individual, and is not intended to take as professional advice. Welcome to the Foreplay Podcast. Join the journey, experiences, and sexual adventures of two high school sweethearts navigating through the swinging lifestyle as millennials. Come along for the ride. Dare to play. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Foreplay Podcast. It's Bella. This is Jace. Where have we been? Has been a question that we've been asked <laughs> quite yeah, a bit. Quite a bit. So Rightfully I'm, so. We kind of disappeared from the internet for almost a year. If you're following us on anything, I guess, other than the podcast, because we had so much podcast backlog mm-hmm. that we had been updating once a month or yeah. once every six weeks or so and so it doesn't feel like we've been completely away from the podcast but we haven't made new podcast content in about a year we left the country yeah <laughs> and this is why we've been gone um from the internet also kind of fun if you are here on youtube with us we're also recording our podcast in video format now so if you're listening fun keep listening but if you want an audio or sorry but if you want a visual to go with it you can go to youtube we'll have it linked down in the show notes below it's a different youtube than our other youtube channel but this way we'll have different little i don't know videos to go with the audio i think it's kind of fun except the story times i don't think those will be allowed on youtube so it'll probably just be audio those are too spicy but yeah any of the stuff we're doing q a's or little talks or whatever it is those will be with video so i'm excited to like have them in both ways. And it feels fun to be sitting here recording it this way. And it's like foreplay 2.0. So mm-hmm. the content that we were making in the past, we're still going to be doing content like that. The podcast really isn't going to change that much other than also we got including video. Yeah, also including video and then but all of our other content, we do want to change it up a bit and just make it more personal and more get to know us rather than just educational educational and and it'll still be that though yeah it'll it'll still be educational content it'll still be lifestyle stuff but it'll also be other parts of our life so it's not just all lifestyle all the time which we're excited about to kind of yeah to share a more bigger picture because i feel like people have this idea that swingers right you you're a swinger swinger creator that's all you do is create swinging content but there's so much more to it than that like just into relationships and just into our relationship like there's so much more than just swinging like that's such a small part of our life but if every content we make is literally just swinging content then you don't really get to see a bigger picture and i think that that's why there's so many stereotypes out there because people that don't know anything and see from the outside they see swingers all they do is swing that must be everything they are so that's why we kind of want to like open it up a little bit more and i'm really excited i feel like it's bella described it uh as a new book or a new part to a book it's not even a new chapter it's like a whole new thing so It's like Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. I feel like we're on the fifth part or something. Because we had like childhood. Well, that's a book. No, that's the thing. I'm not saying it's like. Yeah, because it's a different part of the book book series. Okay. Yeah, it's not a part of a book. It's like a different book of our book series of life. That's what it feels like. It doesn't feel like a different chapter either. Because that'd be a long book. That would. (laughs) But I hope that we have more than only seven books. If we're at five already, I'm not ready to go quite that fast. No, we got a lot, a lot of, (laughs) a lot more time to go. (laughs) But I think the big question has been that we've gotten so many times is where have we been? So where have we been? Um, We're still together. Yes. (laughs) Okay. We never (laughs) divorced or were apart or anything like that. We have always been together. We just took a break from creating content Mm -hmm. and the lifestyle in general because we decided to travel. Yeah. And we were traveling internationally. And so it's not like the travel we were doing back in 2022 where it was pretty much all lifestyle travel Mm -hmm. and we were like going to different clubs and different... um, Well, we still go on a bunch of different cruises and resorts and stuff but this was more personal travel to us and to really see the world we visited how many countries in in 2023 visited almost 30 countries and we had this original plan we're like we're gonna vlog all of it we're gonna keep making pockets we're gonna do all of that and then we realized that we needed kind of a little break and we wanted to enjoy this trip we wanted to do this for the last honestly 10 12 years since a couple years i started dating we wanted to travel full time and we just thought that the content would kind of get in the way of that and we wanted everything in our life is so shared and we kind of wanted this trip for ourselves so there's pictures and things like that little videos but 
we just took the time and we grew individually. We grew together to become like a better version of ourselves and ourselves together. And yeah, we spent the first, we took a cruise from Florida that took us over to Europe. And I think we went to around 16 countries or so, 17 countries like that in Europe. We spent around three months there. And then once we left Europe, we went over to Asia, spent a couple months in Asia. We went to Australia for a little while. We went back to Asia for another few months. And so we really kind of went all over the world. And earlier in the year, we had gone to South America. So we kind of just went, we we, went everywhere. We put everything in storage too. Mm -hmm. So we were fully nomadic. Whenever we did this and when we wanted to do this, 10 years ago, is that yeah. what was it? How long? Mm-hmm. It was a, it's been a really long time that we wanted to do this. We thought that we were going to want to live nomadically forever. Like we thought that we would be able to um, do our job, make content, yeah. um, you know, do all the internet stuff that's included with what we do on the road. But it was so mentally and physically draining to be traveling from place to place so often mm-hmm. that we actually started missing just the normal life. Yeah. And I think that before that, we never thought that was something that we would crave for. We always Mm -hmm. wanted to be going to the next place, doing the next thing. And then once we were gone for, it was about a month or so. Maybe a month or two. We were going to a different country every, at the beginning was every three to four days. And then yeah. we started doing a week and then two weeks mm-hmm. to, in each country. And it just got exhausting. And it took away the love of and the magic of travel for us. Mm-hmm. And it felt like that just became our normal life. And so whenever we were had plans to go to the next country, it was just not looking forward to the travel day and then having to do all the stuff beforehand. And then once you got there, it's just like, okay, like we're here now versus whenever you have a trip planned for a really long time, you're really looking forward to it and planning everything. And then you're excited to go. But anyways, I don't know if that really makes sense, but it just took away. Uh, (laughs) Well, you went it. But I I think the thing that like, I don't want it to come off like, Ooh, we're not grateful that we got to go on this trip that we didn't love every minute of it. Like I loved every minute of it, but it's like, I think that like the thing that, but I think she described it really well, but there's something about the anticipation of a trip and you look forward to it. It's like, Oh, I'm going to go on this cruise in three months. You look forward to, you look forward to it. But then when your life and, and when also when you're traveling full time, it's not like when you're on a vacation where it's every day you're doing touristy things. Like we were doing some work things like behind the scenes. We were just living. Right. And when you're living, it's not like you're going on a vacation. So sometimes you're like, it would be two weeks. You finally start to know your little neighborhood you're in. You finally started to know where you went, like to eat, where you'd like to do this. You're finally starting to understand like the little bits of how that culture works and you move to the next place. And so we feel like the best thing that like described the feeling to me was I feel like there's this niceness of life normally when you're at home that you can go into an autopilot with some things like you. I know where I'm driving. I know where the grocery store is. I can speak English here. I don't have to convert my money. There's I, I know how the washing machine works. Like there's a trillion like little things <laughs> that make a huge difference that lets you go on autopilot so that your brain can focus all the tasks that are outside of those normal day-to-day life things, which is how our body is supposed to function. But for us moving so much, we could never go on autopilot in any sense. And so I feel like our hormones were all out of whack. I feel like like, so many things were just like physically difficult. It was amazing, but also like logistically difficult and visas. Like there's just so many things like we never even thought about that, that go into it. So it was an amazing trip. Um, people always ask, what, like, where would you recommend going? Everywhere. But no. Um, no, I would definitely say that Tokyo was our favorite, favorite. And then probably Sydney, Australia. I love that. If you can do a cruise through Sydney, or not through Sydney, from Sydney throughout Australia, highly, highly recommend. It was awesome. We saw a whale, like yeah. a wild whale that we were wild. planning. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Wild. <laughs> well, not all wild. It wasn't like they, a zoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, like we weren't expecting it. Like we didn't yeah. go on a whale watching excursion. We just happened to be going back on the tender to the cruise ship and um, saw the whale. Oh, and it was amazing. It was incredible. The people who were driving dri- the boat, yeah. the How tender you- drivers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they said they had never been that close to one in all of their time driving a tender. So like we got incredibly, incredibly lucky. And it was a humpback whale, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it was incredible. 
We spent a month in Vietnam, which is where your family is from. Like your parents were born there. Yep. So to be able to spend two weeks in the South, two weeks in the North, you got to see your culture that you grew up completely in and that I grew up in for the last 16 years. And I've never been to Vietnam before either. So it was a really cool experience mm -hmm. to feel so close to my culture and how interesting it was from the South, which is from which is where my parents are from, where I'm from, and then the North, which I can speak Vietnamese and I couldn't understand the Northern dialect. And if it felt like I was in a different country, it was that different. And yeah. the food and everything was so different. So that was a really cool experience to, to, to yeah. experience. So I would say recommend places. I'd go to Tokyo, I'd go to Sydney, I'd go to, I'd go to Vietnam. Ho Chi Minh, I think I like the food more, but Hanoi has a cooler vibe. It's more yeah. Vietnamese feeling. And then we also really loved uh, Bangkok, Thailand. And then not on this trip, but we've been to Barcelona a couple times and that's our other favorite city in Europe. So I think those are the five like top places that I would say yeah. of ever we've been ever to go to. And then we moved, so we didn't have a home for like about a year. And then we, since we had everything already put in storage, we didn't know at that time if we wanted to move back to Dallas or if you wanted to go somewhere else. At the beginning of this, you know, everything was up in the air. So we thought maybe we would want to be doing this forever, like yeah. very, very long term. And um, maybe we'd want to live in, like we thought we were going to do the digital nomad Bali thing. And we were going to live there for a long time. We were there for a month. Yeah, we were there for not, a long not time. Not our spot, not our spot. No, no, no. Uh, a beautiful place, but I just, we couldn't live, live there. Mm -hmm. And so after talking about it and everything, we are now in... Austin, Texas, and we just moved in and everything's finally completely unpacked and we're really making it feel like a home home because yeah. we know we're actually going to stay put this time. Yeah. All of our previous apartments and homes that we lived in, it we kind of knew that it was a temporary thing because yeah. our goal was always to travel full time. So we never really made everything feel like how we wanted it to feel until now. And it's been so, so, so fun, like getting new furniture that we like really love and yeah. just like decorating like how we want to. And the decorating was so different after traveling too, yeah. actually. We always thought that we really liked modern contemporary and then more so going to Bali was when we really liked more of like the organic looking stuff organic and, modern i've heard yeah. that's what it's called i didn't know that but <laughs> i thought Bella we had like a, <laughs> i thought we had we wanted a balinese style which i still love that style but yeah it's kind of like a mix between balinese and organic modern and it's just been so fun getting everything like set up yeah. and doing all this stuff it's still not even completely finished oh my yeah. gosh and our couch we got like this awesome couch that we'll talk about later in our weekly obsessions but oh and you guys if you haven't you should go watch our youtube video that will be up when this comes out um We'll have a link down below, but that is our, like, we did a house tour. So if you guys want to see like what our house looks like, you're welcome. Well, our, to apartment. Go. our apartment. We, say, yeah. we call it it's home house. Yeah. We do live in an apartment. It's a not home. A, not a house yet. Cause yeah. we still, we actually need to make sure that we really like Austin before yeah. we like hop in to buy a, a house house. Here. Yeah. But, but we're ideally, we, ideally it's going to no, be here. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and also I think one other thing that like is so, um, we're so excited about is the fact that we always knew we were going to leave, we knew we were going to leave at some point. We were supposed to go at the beginning of 2020 and then COVID <laughs> happened. So and then we had to wait. We were supposed to go the next year, but then it was still too much testing to have to do that every week. And so finally when we got to go, we got to go. But because we knew we were always going to go, I don't want to say that we didn't have, we had, we had a ton of friends in Dallas, right? Like we had a lot of friends, but I feel like we never had like a really core group of close friends. And I think we always kind of pulled away from that because we knew we were going to leave. Mm -hmm. Most of our best friends were people that we met on trips because we knew we'd actually be back on more lifestyle crews. We knew we'd be back more on those things. So it was easy to get close to those people. But, because, but even that, it's hard. Yeah. Because, I mean, you kind of get close again as you get closer to the trip. But then everybody has their own lives that they're living. And it's not like you're keeping in touch as much yeah. throughout the year until that trip comes. So it's like we're just it's ex hard. Yeah. yeah. But that's why we're excited to be here in Austin now. This podcast is brought to you by us, Bella and Jace. If you're going on a vacation or maybe you have a gift that you want to give your other lifestyle friends and you're looking for lifestyle clothing, we have the best apparel on the market for you. We have not only clothing, bikinis, swimsuits, we have backpacks, tumblers, cups, anything that you can name. We probably have it. You can find that at foreplay.com shop. Let's say you're at a party, you're going on vacation, you know, things are moving a little bit slow. Maybe 
maybe you want some conversation to flow, maybe you want to move stuff towards play. Well, we have the perfect game for you. It's called Four Play the Game. It is a digital and physical lifestyle icebreaker game and you can find out all about it at foreplay.com slash games that's number four o-u-r-p-l-a-y.com slash games if you don't have a lifestyle vacation planned a resort or a cruise planned why not you can join us you can find that at foreplay.com slash playcation we have not only information about the events and trips that will be on this year but also other options for you as well and it doesn't cost any extra for you to book through our links but helps us a lot helps us continue to be able to make this type of content for you now back to the show it just feels like this is going to be a place that we really love and we've already been to collect here one time and we met a bunch of nice people so that's kind of everything that's been happening with us it's pretty much our whirlwind of a life update yeah. and it kind of brings us into the second part of the podcast which this podcast doesn't have as much of a structure yeah it's just kind of like a, a talking life update yeah. and what's coming up kind of podcast and uh the next thing we have coming up is temptation cruise 2024 so excited for temptation cruise yeah. it is i would say probably our favorite i don't know i love bliss too. i it's know so no hard. it's hard. and especially bliss cruise this year that's going to be on symphony of the seas is going to be absolutely crazy but and, and the one in april I, we've never been on april bliss this year we're going to yeah. april bliss this year so we'll get us like I'm really excited, and that's that's our only three light trips we have planned this year, and I'm so looking forward to each of them. But it's only literally five weeks, I think, oh, no. until Temptation Cruise. We have and so much to do. There is so much stuff that we <laughs> need to do. We have a really great group of people coming with us this year. I'm really excited for it. So if you guys don't have a lifestyle vacation, make sure to check out our links. We do groups for all of the cruises. And, you know, we're, we're right now we're in the process of we've been deciding what kind of stuff we are going to make because we give out little goodies. And so what stuff we're going to make, what our meetups are going to look like and like we're planning all that right now. But it's crazy because we haven't made it yet because we literally just got back. Our house is finally stable and somehow it's only five weeks until we're going to be there. Um, and so we have to get on that. But. I'm like really excited to go through and start making all this stuff. But we're gonna like do vlogs and stuff like that of that too. So I said you guys can keep up with that if you wanna see what kind of stuff we're we're doing. But definitely go to foreplay.com slash cruise, summer four O U R P L A Y dot com slash cruise, and you can check out the cruise that we're gonna be on this year or any other trips if we're gonna go on any other trips. It'll be in foreplay.com slash playcation. So if you wanna check any of that out, you can go check it out in those sites. We'll have the show notes down below, we'll have the YouTube video, we'll have it down below that. But um yeah, I, I kind of want to talk a little bit about Temptation and I don't know what we're excited about for it. I'm really excited that this year, the last day is a sea day. Yes, Because the agree. last two years, we've been on it the last two years. They've had one more in addition to that. But the last two years, it has been a port day on the last yeah. day. And so then it's super tiring. And I don't know, I just love the sea days. Me too. Because you're able to hang out with the friends. And I don't know, there's not that, um, it's not stressful, but it's not that extra added thing of going on excursions yeah. or finding something to do off port. And so we yeah. really love it whenever yeah. it's a, a sea day on the very last day yeah. of the cruise. And then I feel like people are just more, not crazy, I would say, but it's just like a more chill vibe, but in a party way. Does that make sense? I, I you think know what it I'm, makes you sense if I'm you've saying? been, yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if it makes sense if you wouldn't, if you haven't been before. But yeah, there's just something about like, if you're going out and you're on an excursion all day, you're hot, you're tired, you take a shower, you're sunburnt, you just don't always feel like going out. But and you, you have to pack. Yeah, but like yeah. the last night is usually, it can be some of the f most fun time because people want to go hard because it's the last night, it's your last day of vacation. But then if you're so tired from the excursion, then you're tired. So like, I'm really excited about that. I also, I would say that for the most part, I'm pretty excited about the themes. Let's see. We have a glow party. which Always fun. Always is going to be a good one. I think that's the last night, which also makes that better, that it's going to be a not sea day, that it's glow, if yes. they keep in the right order. There's a pimps and hoes party. Honestly, not a big fan of pimps and hoes theme. I think it's a little outdated. And I don't know why the cruises keep doing that thing. I don't know either. It pops up a lot. I just feel like there's so many great themes that yeah. that they could think of, and I don't know why that one comes up all it. the time. Yeah, there's a toga party. Because aren't we oh. all we all dress like hoes every 
everyone you could dress like a hoe. Yeah. So what is it like a specific? I don't know. I'm tired of the gigolo. Me too. So that's look. just not my thing. Yeah. But yeah, but there's a toga, so like a Greek, that kind of one, which I think will be um, really fun. And then there is what an animal theme. There's an animal night and then a pajama night. And for the foreplay group that we have going with us, we are doing a Pokemon theme for the animal night, which I think is so fun. I've always wanted yeah. to do a big group theme. And I don't know how many people are, are going to yeah do that with us, but I think it would be fun if, if, if a lot of people did and we we're all dressed up as different Pokemon and stuff. Yeah, and I know. We have some friends doing some evolutions. Yeah, so I'm we have some evolution. people that we are like really close to. We've been on the cruise with the last few years. And then by so we invited everyone from the group that wants to participate. So I know those people that we went on the cruises last year are doing it because yeah. we've specifically talked to At them about it. At least I think it. so. I Some think of them are. are. I don't yeah. know. We'll, we'll but see. But <laughs> I, hope, I hope more people in the group do it because I think it'd be really fun just to have a ton of Pokemon on the dance floor. Um, I think that'd be really fun. So I'm really I'm really looking forward to that. And obviously Glow Night I think is the other one that I know it's an overdone theme. I feel like that's the one that but never gets old though. It doesn't. That it's, and Leather and Lace. Like, so yeah, that very or a sexy, fetish night. Yeah, that, which they're not doing on this one. Um, yeah, so, why not? They I don't know, usually do. Like, also, I th they, Temptation never does a um, a formal night anymore. That's right. They only did it one time. And it was Valentine's Day, so the, the first year it was on Valentine's Day, which I really liked that formal night. So, I don't know. I think that we should definitely have replaced pimps and hoes with literally pretty much anything else. <laughs> but um, but overall, I think that the actual themes are like pretty decent because sometimes you get like themes that are not the best. So. Four out of five being pretty good. I don't love pajama either, but... Yeah, what if pajama is so uh, general? Like, it's I agree. so big. I would have rather but have But I do lace. like what you have planned for pajama night. Yeah, so you have to wait. Check that out because I think it'll hopefully be cute. It might be terrible. We'll see how it turns it's out. it's going to be cute. I, I hope forgot it's good. what I'm doing for pajama night. Oh, yeah. I, wonder I, do, I feel like great. we can talk about it. Because we can, like, because we're getting excited, right? So I, I don't want to yeah. say, oh, you're going to have to wait to see. No, but if, I you mean, you'll see. but if you want to actually physically see it, we will take videos and stuff from yeah, the, yeah, from the yeah. cruises and, like, when we're getting ready for it. So you will be able to see what we do, but we can't talk about it. Yeah. So for Animal Night, I know I want to be Sylveon. Sylveon mm -hmm. is my favorite Pokemon, or at least one of my favorite Pokemon, but definitely my favorite evolution. And you are going to be Vaporeon. Yep. Vaporeon's like a, it's Sylveon is like a cutesy, very girly evolution, and then Vaporeon looks like a mermaid, kind of. Yeah. It's like, so that one's going to be really cool. Are you going to do a headpiece? I don't know yet. I you really need to. Right? Oh, I, will, oh, I need to make us the um, headbands. Yeah, like, see, you need ears. To do. But then like having, because that would be cool to have like the mermaid thing. But then there's under the sea theme for uh, Bliss, Bliss. April, I yeah. think. No, no, Bliss, Bliss November. November. Yeah, so I so said we really yeah. don't know. We don't know exactly what we're gonna do for all of them. For the pajama night, we know it's night, for sure. For the That's pajama what. night, I did buy like I don't know what are those called. I feel like they'd be called. I would it's call like them a Sophie short. I don't know. If what's that's, a Sophie? Sh no, it is not called? a Sophie short. Like the ones that cheerleaders wear. It has that like S O F F E. Doesn't it have that like cut though of like what no. those shorts would be? But it's like a. It's like basically I bought these like these short like they're women. They look like a Victoria's Secret yeah. fashion show like in. 2010 like that pink and white striped satin and it's, it's just like little shorts it's what it's a pajama set it's just oh. like a, a well, women's pajama set but because so it's I don't short, know the words <laughs> like it looks so cute on you with so, like the um i don't know i think it's gonna look cute yeah. i think it's gonna work out and then you have a robe to go with it i have a robe oh, i have your old robe that i'm wearing to go with that so it's awesome because we can share clothes now pretty much Especially for these themes yeah. and stuff. I feel like a lot, like the mesh yeah. things, I feel like we always are wearing something like that. You're, I feel like for yeah. these things, you just wear my clothes a yeah. lot of the times now. Yeah, I feel like I've just been dressing like slutty on the cruises the slutty last... Slutty or very, very slutty. Yeah, um, and I don't know, I just like it. I like I like it for me. So it makes me feel sexy. It makes me feel fun. But I also feel like people like it. Like women, I feel like have been like complimenting more on my outfits, which I mean, I don't ever complain about that. <laughs> so, but I just, I really like how it is. But lots of time it just does end up being like your clothes because it's a little, you know, random mesh shirt or like booty shorts or something like that. Also, and, it's just easier to find those types of clothes. Yeah. Cause even, yes, it's like quotations, women's clothing, but if it's just, 
little boxer shorts looking yeah. things that you need in a specific color that you need them to be short i feel like all the yeah. men's ones we found like freaking almost like, like two inches above your knee yeah that is not slutty yeah and it's nice because they don't <laughs> take five up inches <laughs> <laughs> they don't take up much room in your luggage which is yes. also nice because you can pack lighter but somehow i still pack so much yeah you, you don't overpack. wear i'm telling i think it's a girly thing no okay. matter what even if you're wearing hardly anything you will still pack a lot of stuff i don't know about my yeah, shoe I got situation no complaints about it, yeah. <laughs> you're going to wear them on the airplane whatever the big ones are you have to wear them on the airplane no i don't know what to do i end up just wearing like the same shoe all the time anyway my idea was okay so i got these new crocs and they're the crocs mega crush and they're like huge platform crocs that i am obsessed with i got them in white and black and my idea is to change them up for the theme every night right that's cute right that, it's an idea <laughs> so then i can change out the gibbets and i can put different ones on them i have five weeks to do this i don't know if it's actually gonna happen we'll see how that goes because i'm not wearing a lot of the part i think every party on temptation unless it rains is outside on the deck Right? Yeah, I believe everyone's outside on the deck. Unless and if it, it rains, rains, then it's it goes in the, inside. Yeah, in the, I believe. In the club. But it could change. I mean, every year, yeah. obviously, they can change up. It could be different. But in the past, that's how it's been. And just wearing... If you didn't listen to last year's cruise video um, or podcast, even in sneakers, I somehow fall sometimes. So... Crocs aren't they're they're made for more water like they're more water wear shoes right aren't they? Yeah, are they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think maybe I will have more traction, and although I will have some height, maybe I will be more stabilized. Before Temptation Cruise, uh, the last couple times, last time we stayed in an Airbnb that was outside of Miami with some friends, and I think we are a little too far away from Miami. That was um, an interesting <laughs> experience where we were at. And so then uh, the years before that, we Jason and I just got a place by ourselves that was like an Airbnb, but- It was a bunk bed. Do you remember that? Oh my God. We yeah. accidentally booked this place and it was two bunk beds. <laughs> Like the night before Swingers Cruise, we had to sleep on bunk beds. <laughs> but one of them had pineapple sheets. Oh my gosh. Which was okay. kind of funny. This is a little tidbit from our uh, our travels from earlier in the year. But we went on the Australia cruise. We went on the cruise and we do it to where the cruise ship can choose our cabin. And you can put in there what you request, like what you prefer. And every single time, we've always done that. And we say, you know, we just want two twin beds that are put together. So then it makes, you know, a, mm -hmm. so at least we could sleep next to each other. So this time, first time it's ever happened, we get yeah. on this cruise ship and it's a long cruise. It was 10 days, Ten right? Nights, 10 yeah. nights, yeah. So we get in there, we get into our cabin and it's a bunk bed cabin on a cruise ship, yeah. a bunk bed cabin together for like a married, and we even had on there that it was our anniversary. We got on, on our anniversary. Yeah, we got, <laughs> and we go with the door, we were so excited. We were like, what the f yeah. And so, oh, it was yeah, so we, we don't love, we don't, that one, we actually took the bed off of the bunk bed. We didn't do this in Miami. That was just one night. That yeah. was fine. And they were supposed to change the bed for us, but they were like, well, we don't know if we can give you guys a different room until the fifth day, which honestly, it made no sense. Yeah. We'll they, get into they that. Gave, they gave us a new room on the fifth yeah. day, which was nice for the second half of the cruise, but... We like just not destroy the room but we like put we rearranged it we feng shui'd it to where we could at least have both mattresses next to each other on the floor <laughs> it and was an experience. that's how we we spent the first five nights of that cruise <laughs> we didn't spend much time in the room that no, time but. no but it was it was it was a fun it was a fun time anyway and we're not staying at the bunk bed hotel. No. Or what was it, Airbnb? We're not staying at the bunk bed place this time. Yeah, or, or an Airbnb. Yeah, we, or got, an we Airbnb. got a hotel. We're going to the Clevelander Hotel, which we've heard good things about. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like more of a party hotel in general. I think they have pool parties during the day. And so that's going to be, I think it's going to be really fun. We're yeah. actually getting there 
two we'll, we'll be there for two days before rather than just the night before which and is so, so nice yeah. especially because we have to like kind of like prep some stuff to go mm -hmm. for our group so like to be able to get there have a full day to rest so that when the first day that we get on we can have everything prepped and stuff is really really nice so i don't know i'm just so excited for temptation we haven't been to really like a lifestyle event it'll be a year since like a big you know like cruise or anything so we didn't get yeah. to go on bliss this year because we saw the country and we so, did do New Year's Eve at Colette Austin, yeah. which was like a bigger event, and that was fun. Yeah, but not like a, a vacation. It's, it'll be a year since our last lifestyle yeah, vacation, yeah. so I think we're just like really looking forward to it. It's going to be so fun to like see friends that we haven't seen in a year. And make so many new friends. Yeah. I'm so excited to meet like so many people yeah. and get late night ice cream and late night food yeah. after playing. <laughs> But but if you guys if you guys uh, if you guys are not booked on Temptation Cruise and you want to go we have a ton of information about Temptation Cruise all over our podcast and every channel but uh, you can go to foreplay.com slash cruise and you can see all the cruises that we're going to be on this year but we there's people still booking so I mean by the time this comes out it might be three weeks before the cruise two weeks before the cruise but. If you have no vacation, your last minute, and you want to go, come party with us. Well, uh, or you guys can come next year because we're yeah. we're going to go next year. And they already have the dates out for that for mm -hmm. Temptation 2025. And it's going to be on a different ship. Yeah. So that one's going to be on a Norwegian yeah. ship that we've never been on. This cruise this year is going to be on the Celebrity Summit, which is the same ship it's been on for the last this will be three. This is like the third in year in a row. I'm not sure. It might have been. It might be the fourth year in a row because we didn't go on like the inaugural oh, yeah, one. Or you can go to Bliss Cruise April yeah. or Bliss Cruise November. Bliss Cruise November is going to be like probably the biggest lifestyle event of all time because it's the biggest ship that they've ever done at all. It's one of the biggest ships in the world. It's the Symphony of the Seas, it's Royal Caribbean be, Symphony of the yeah, Seas. Yeah, it's, it's gonna like be five thousand people, five yeah. thousand swingers. Like, yeah, what? It's going to be awesome. And people go all out on the themes. I cannot wait to go all, all, all out yeah. on the themes. So we're so excited for all of it, but I think we'll wrap up that part of the podcast here, but we cannot finish without hitting you guys with Bella and Jason's Jason's weekly obsession. Wow, you came back so yeah, strong right? after not doing it for a while. That, that was, was a, great. That was, that, was, that was a lot. That I feel was, like you're going to have to lower that down. I, yeah, I, I will. <laughs> you guys heard also, it lowered, but... <laughs> I've, we've never done that while it was recording, so I feel like I was midway through and I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> That's what you always look like doing this. Do I? Yeah. <laughs> but this time I like, I, I was cognizant about it. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, Bella and Jace's weekly, weekly obsessions. obsessions. Nice. So what? what is your, oh, you may go first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are your weekly obsessions? Okay. So well, one of my weekly obsessions is Tate McRae. So we haven't done a weekly obsession in a long time. So there's been a lot over the last year, but more recently I have, I love Tate McRae, the musician. She's a musician, and I think that her music, her new album came out. It's called Think Later, and it's a no-skip album for me, which does not happen very Same. often, and it's just so good, and she is so hot, and, like, you need to go watch her music video called X's. This girl is, like, she dances so well, and her music is so good, and... I'm literally just obsessed. Like, I feel like there's no pop stars like her right now. Like mm -mm. she is one that actually, actually dances. And she was originally a dancer mm -hmm. and she thought she was going to be a dancer her whole life and then got into pop, making pop music, yeah. which I mean, she does dance better than she sings, but it's like, she also sings amazing. So it's yeah. not like it's a big difference there. But I yeah. mean, when she, she, that girl can dance. Yeah. Do yourself a favor and listen or go watch the ex's lyric video. That's, That's the one that you need to see. Video, yeah. Or she's like just dancing the whole time. Yeah. And I'm like, ah. Yeah. And we got tickets to see her and when she's coming to Austin, I think that's in like June or something. So that is one of my obsession. That is one of my obsessions. My second weekly obsession is Saltburn. Ooh. Saltburn is a movie and I don't even know how to describe it. I just honestly would recommend watching it. It's, it's very like, it's not, I don't even know if it's a psychological thriller. It's a drama and it's with Jacob Elordi and Barry Co Cogan, something Ke like Keegan? Keegan, something, something like that. Yeah. And I love Jacob Elordi. And um, the movie is just, you just don't expect anything. And like, it just keeps turning and turning and turning and just getting better and better. And it's like, there's parts that are like hard to watch because like it makes your stomach hurt. And there's parts that are like 
make you laugh. It's just, it's beautiful and it's art. And um, I think my favorite movie of, the, of 2023 was Saltburn. I just absolutely loved, loved Saltburn. So that is, that's my, that's my obsession. You had great obsessions. Thank you. I could also use those as my obsessions. Thank you. Because I too am obsessed with both of those. Thank you. Saltburn though, just, if you guys watch it, don't watch a trailer or don't, mm-hmm. just go, if you don't know about it, just go into it blind. Because I feel like we went into it blind. Yeah. We only knew that Jacob Elordi was in it and it was kind of crazy. That's yeah. all we knew. Mm-hmm. And we watched it and it was just, it was mind bending i would say I it was just a movie. wild ride and i loved it um, i think it's streaming on prime right now oh is it i yeah. think or hbo it's streaming on one of the main uh services uh but yeah you guys should do yourself a favor and watch that one because i don't recommend movies like that highly very often i'm like i'm obsessed with this movie because it's great but like that one i will watch every year i feel like i could watch like once a year and just but nothing will ever be like the first time. So yeah. I would watch that. I movie. wish I could watch it for the first time again. Me too. <laughs> so my weekly obsessions, I had to take out the iPad here so I could read it correctly and not be uncultured <laughs> what exactly it is. But I've been making my own yogurt. So I've been obsessed with just making my own Greek yogurt. And you can, it's super easy. I make it in the Instant Pot just with milk. And... I saw that you can make more of a kind of a dip or a creamy kind of spread. Basically, I was trying just to get out a lot of the whey protein because it's super watery. And then I put it in some cheesecloth and then it will just take out all of like the liquidy stuff. And so you're left with a really thick, it actually ended up being thicker than what I thought it was going to be because I thought it was just going to be yogurt. But it turns out I made something called labne. If we just look that up. We had to, we had right? to look up. Yeah. I think you said it right. Yeah. <laughs> Labne. And I'm going to read the a description on Google. So on Wikipedia, it says strained yogurt, Greek yogurt, yogurt cheese, sack yogurt, current yogurt, or Turkish yogurt. So it's a yogurt that's been strained to remove most of its whey, resulting in a thicker consistency than normal unstrained yogurt while still preserving the distinctive sour taste of yogurt. I actually think that's exactly what I said. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, I think it's a Middle Eastern type dish. Yeah, it's Turkish, I believe. Yeah. And... I put uh, garlic and salt and onion powder and just uh, with some olive oil and it is the best dip and it's I have really just good. been obsessed with it, especially eating it with um, pretzels and carrots and cucumbers. So that's been my obsession is making my own labne. Yeah. And my second obsession, um, our couch. Yes. So we got a new couch and it's one of those modular ones we've been wanting a modular couch for as long as i can Years, remember yeah. yeah and we wanted to originally we were going to like our dream was to get the love sack couch which is um the ones that you can everything is interchangeable and so you can change out the backs so you can change out the arms and you can move it into all different configurations which hello for a swingers party yeah. what but we never really loved how the love sack couch looked I think it looks too, it looks too modular. Like it kind of looked, to me, I feel like it looks more like a college-y aesthetic. And I know you can dress it up, but like, it just didn't look plush and it didn't feel plush. Yeah. And it it wasn't comfortable. And it was expensive for not like ticking all the boxes that we wanted. Exactly. So we went a bunch of places to try to find the perfect couch for us. And I think we found the perfect couch for us. Yeah. And it is absolutely amazing. It has extra deep seats. It's a nice like beige-ish color, not super, super white. And it is so comfortable. Yeah. And we've never had a couch that we loved before. Most of the time in any of our other homes, we just pretty much spent all of our time in the bedroom. Yeah. And this is the first time that we're actually spending time in the living room. I love it. And it's gonna it's going to be so nice. For like, we can turn it into a bed. So like, we haven't done that yet. We can turn it into a bed. So if you want to like watch movies in there, mm-hmm. like you said, for parties, the amount of different configurations that you could like do it if you were like playing with people and you had like a big group, that's insane. But truthfully, just for laying and watching shows and movies, and I was editing on there yesterday. It is so comfortable, so nice. Like I said, I think I said it early in the podcast, but we do have a video little tour of our apartment. So we'll have the link below. So if you want to see what it looks like, you can go see it. But we only have four yeah. of the seven pieces right now the rest get delivered here in a few weeks we actually but... have to keep one of the pieces in our storage unit because it's going to be too big for our apartment <laughs> we wanted to buy it so it's like our forever couch and we just 
we were afraid that they were going to discontinue it or something. So we were like, yeah. we need to get all of the pieces. Yeah. And I just don't think we will ever need a couch bigger than this. No. A seven piece no, couch. It's huge. Is it seven or eight total? It'll be seven total. But we'll only have six like in our apartment, yeah. Yeah. which takes up a majority of our living room already. But I'm so, oh my God, it's amazing. And I can't yeah. wait to get the other pieces yeah. and then have friends over and like have a place to like really, really hang out. It's going to be awesome when we get Yay. all of them. But yeah, I guess, I mean, that's really it. So this was kind of a an abnormal in the sense of just like no structure whatsoever for yeah. a podcast for us. We usually like some sort of structure. But also this is kind of a little bit more of like what, I mean, not completely unstructured, but just we're wanting to be more, uh, I don't know if unfiltered is a word. I feel like we're always pretty unfiltered. Like a dialogue? It's yeah. just like it's us like having a conversation about whatever that topic is. and Yeah, and just like being even more authentic to what our life is like without being like, I feel like before we'd be like, oh, we have to talk about like this specific thing. We had like an outline and we just yeah. had like everything so structured and everything like my perfectionism. I was like, which I'm like really working to move past yeah. and traveling has helped so much with that but just being more okay with mistakes and just mm -hmm. things like that and so like i liked how this was more chaotic because like life isn't structured yeah. and all if the you time. guys hear some ums and things like that in here yeah sorry <laughs> i'll believe them and you know what we might say like a lot which I don't even know if we said it that much in this one. I yeah, I am trying did. to say like yeah. less. I know we say like too much, so I do apologize for all the people who have emailed us that we say like too much. We are aware we are trying to be better about saying like because that's a good constructive criticism. It is. It's getting better. <laughs> but like, like as I just <laughs> said it, before we would re-record certain parts of what we were talking about because we're back thinking, oh my gosh, did we say like this many times? And so I just don't want, we don't want to be like that yeah. anymore. We are yeah. not going to say like a lot. I'm just like, yeah. that's an example yeah, yeah. <laughs> of how I just want it to be more free, more authentic and more just, I don't know. Yeah. Foreplay 2.0. Yeah. Foreplay part five. Foreplay Order of the Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thank you guys so much for listening or watching if you're yeah. here on YouTube or doing both if you really want to listen to it twice for some reason. Um, <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys so much and we will talk to you in the next one. Bye. Bye! If you'd like to support the show, you can leave us a five-star review wherever you're listening to our podcast. All our information will be listed in the show notes below and on our website, foreplay.com. That's number four, O-U-R-P-L-A-Y.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where we make videos and vlogs about the swinging lifestyle. Head to foreplay.com slash YouTube to watch and subscribe. We have the ultimate adult party game for the sexually inclined called Foreplay the Game that's both digital and physical. It's perfect for breaking the ice and spicing up any party. You can find more information at foreplay.com slash games. We also have the best swinger lifestyle, kinky, and adult humor clothing and accessories that you can find at foreplay.com slash shop. If you're looking to plan a lifestyle destination, booking through our links at foreplay.com slash travel really helps support the show and helps us be able to continue to create this type of content for you. We're on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Twitch, and more. You can find all our current social media accounts at foreplay.com slash socials. And I have an OnlyFans, which you can find at onlyfans.com slash VIP. We also have a Facebook group and Discord community and would love for you to join us. You can find the direct links in the show notes below. Lastly, we're on STC and Cassidy at Foreplay, and you can get a free full membership trial by using our link. You can email us at hello at foreplay.com with any questions or comments or head to foreplay.com slash ask. Again, all our information will be listed in the show notes below, and we thank you so much for listening to our podcast. See you in the next one. Bye!